Hello everyone, Will again here and if you can't tell I am very excited and that is because we've made one of the biggest investments into the sheep enterprise on the farm yet and that is because we have invested in a wrapper handling system so this is a portable handling system and what we're going to be doing today guys is talking from Mark from Wrapper about how it works and what it does and basically yeah, all about the wrapper standard 10. So if you enjoyed today guys, please give the video a massive like. If you want to see more stuff like this, please smash that subscribe button. And don't forget, videos every Wednesday and Saturday at half seven in the morning. Cheers, hope you enjoy. So guys, we're just here with Mark from Rapper and he's just going to give us a run through of the new handling system, how it works and all the information we need about it basically. So I'll just hand it over to Mark now and hit, get on with it basically. Okay, great. Well, this is the 10 foot standard. Um, it's actually come with 22 hurdles rather than the standard 20. Yes. But you can obviously have it with uh, fewer hurdles or, or actually it will go up to uh, a top of, of 26 hurdles. Cool. It's the maximum on it. Um, comes with a 16 foot drenching race which we'll discuss, uh, 6 foot forcing gate, 4L brackets which we'll go into later. There's only one rule with our yards, um, and it is a rule, is that it needs to travel on a slack strop. Yeah, yeah. And that means that it's engaged in the suspension springs yeah, yeah. rather than uh, being tensioned on the, on, the, um, <coughs> on the winch. Yeah. Really easy to deploy. First thing you do is literally just wind it up so you've got enough play to get your springs off. Uh, it's like springs. And then you can take your springs off. I tend to rest the springs actually on the on the hurdles because it stops them dropping down into the yard if you do that. Yeah, yeah. There are no switches or catches or anything you need to worry about on the winch cool it's wind up one way wind down the other yeah if you let go of the handle it should be braked that's oh, what it's cool. designed to do so it shouldn't spin on you but obviously for safety reasons look where your feet are <laughs> and uh, yeah just keep winding down until it's flat on the ground it's a few turns because we've made on purpose a highly geared winch so that we can use a strop, which is very tough, yeah, yeah. but also so that it's dead easy to wind up at the end of the day. Yes, so yes. If it was a lower gear, you'd be there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you tend to find people jumping on there and trying to wind up because it's getting too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't have that problem with this winch. What I do, and this is my advice, is I tend not to wind the winch back in, the strop back in again. Yeah. I take it off and I wrap it around the winch. Cool. And there's two reasons for that. One, the strop's already the right length for when you come to pack up. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And two, there are lots of jobs, which we can discuss, that where you can leave the winch in situ and you don't need to take it off, okay? Cool. Um, rest of the deployment is obviously take these catches off, and that comes out. The, the crossbar comes off, and then you've got another two here. One's your secondary clip, and yep. one's your obviously your very important <laughs> wheel clip, <laughs> and your Size. wheel arm just comes off. Yeah. Okay. At that stage, your 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 yard's ready to deploy. Inside the yard, you've got two hurdles with couplings. And two hundred, sorry, two panels without yeah, cu yeah. couplings. Yeah. You've now you've now got a choice. You can either set up a drenching race at the back or the front of the yard. But the first thing I would advise anyone to do is to take off the lighting gear. Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive and it's the uh, it's the easiest thing to break on the yard. Really straightforward. Just follow the the lead straight through to the junction at the front and that's just a twist off here yeah yeah it's just twists off there and then 
your, your front lights just come off with two clips and lift straight off. Cool. And then that's out of the way and you won't trip over it. Um, if you're going to set your drenching race out the back, then you set it with your, your two panels with your couplings coming off where your lighting board was. Yep. Then you'll have 33 inch spreader, which is that, that piece there. Yep, yep. Two more panels with your 33 inch spreader and gate. Cool. So effectively what you end up with is a 16 foot drenching race coming out the back of your yard. Yep, yep. Then my advice would be to use only four seven foot hurdles, just four of these. Yep. And your six foot forcing gate. Yeah. yeah. To make a small forcing pen behind that uh, drenching race. That when I was at work, mm -hmm. we used to do exactly that. Yeah. So we had one of these where I was on placement, Nate, because you also get the big pen. Yep. Then a small one for forcing into, and then exactly. it just makes it much easier once you've got a few in there to keep them flowing. That's it, and it's creating a vacuum all the time. Yeah, yeah. So you've got your main pen, which, as you say, is off your comes off the back of your forcing pen. That's nice and tight because you've drawn up your hurdles, hopefully against a, a fixed fence if yeah, you've got one. Yeah. You then open up your six foot forcing gate yeah. and that acts like a sweeper and sweeps in behind mm. the sheet. But you're creating a vacuum all the time. Yeah, they yeah. want to move forward. You then go open your 33 inch spreader and gate. And again, you're, you're creating a vacuum. They want to move forward because it's 33 inches wide. That's a very specific width. It means that lambs and use can go in together. Yeah. So again, easy for them to go into. It's not narrow, it's quite wide. You can then get into the drenching race at yeah. the back. You work through the pen, if you're drenching or whatever. You can. There's enough uh, width for you to pass sheet behind you, but at the same time, it's narrow enough for you to stop sheet with yeah. a knee. That's the 33 inches yeah, yeah. magic number. Um, <clears throat> so setting up your drenching race at the back, in my opinion, you'll always get the best flow yeah. for the reasons that we just discussed. Yeah, yeah. One thing that's really important about the width of the drenching race is because it's 33 inches wide, obviously the old lamb can get sideways on yeah. and the possibility of jumping. Yeah. It's very important to mention that there are two heights. The panels at yeah. 33 inches high yeah. are designed so that you can get in and out mm. of the uh, drenching race without looking for a gate so it speeds things yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can raise the panels up if okay. you think your sheep are going to jump yeah if there are two settings down here on the, on the spreader yeah a low setting and a higher setting yeah and it makes a big difference it don't ask me why but those few inches <laughs> make a difference obviously you'll have a harder job getting in and out of yeah, the drenching yeah, pen yeah I understand but yeah. you don't want to lose sheep there is another advantage to setting the drenching race up at the back, which is peculiar to our yard. Yeah. We put our um, drafting gates right at the front of the yeah. yard, not here. So they're right at the front. And that means that your seven foot hurdles are not fouling that gate at yeah, any yeah. time. So if you've got a, a smallish job, yeah. you can just whip your, your, your panels out the back, as we discussed, take off just your crossbar and one wheel arm, yeah. leave that wheel arm on, Take off just the number of hurdles that you want to create your to, to make a pen behind your drenching race. Leave this open mm. and it will stay open, and that can create that can be your exit door. So you're effectively only taking off two pieces yeah, yeah. of the yard. So it speeds it up big time. Super quick, super quick. What I'd suggest if you're gonna find yourself doing that is consider taking this board off. Okay. The board is obviously designed to stop sheep from stopping when yeah. you want to send them through because they can't see out but it is designed to come off and taking the board off doesn't affect the strength of the no, gate that's but obviously if you leave it open with the board open with the board off you're going to get a lot more daylight yeah, yeah and they'll yeah. draw much yeah, better yeah. to the end but by using this as an exit you can leave this on you can leave your wheel arm on you can even leave your winch bridge on yeah it's going to be hooked up like that yeah and your sheep will just go underneath so that's, that's option one. Your second option for a drenching race is to set it up in the front. And that necessitates taking these two pins off yep. to take your drawbar off. And then it's diametrically the opposite. So it's a mirror image. You put your two panels with the couplings yep. on here, 33 inch spreader, 
two more panels, 33 inch spreader and gate. And that's going to allow you to draft off anything that you don't want in your drenching mm. race. You can draft away from you into a separate pen and put maybe you use for, for clicking or whatever yep. um, in the drenching race. If you're going to do that, the advantage of that is that your hurdles are already attached to the back. Yep. So now it's a case of literally just Pulling dragging the hurdles around, make a small forcing pen, still want a small forcing pen with just four hurdles and then your main pen behind, send them through and draft them off. If you're, if you're drafting, I would say that you probably want that drenching of uh, this winch off. Yeah. Because you likely as not have somebody pushing sheep yeah, up yeah. to you and this will get in the way. And it couldn't be easier to take it off. Just take these two pins out cool. and it actually slides straight off. Yep. Slide and twist and it comes straight off the back of the It's also the simple and well thought out. I've seen I've been, I've had a look at loads of different ones and this is one of the easiest ones yeah. to use in my opinion. Well, I and think, that's not being biased. For <laughs> I think the 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 thing with making mobile sheep yards is that there's there's a little bit of a compromise between you've got to keep things simple because mm. it, it's easy to make things simple that are strong. Yeah. Uh, 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 and and uh, these yards do take a lot of work. Yeah, um, yeah. So you've got to keep things simple. The devil is normally in the detail. Yeah. Such as the height of the hurdles or the gap, for instance, between this th these panels that's critical i've I mean, never even thought of that even, even 20 mil wider yeah and you'll have sheep getting breaking their legs if they jump yeah. over those it's it's a very very small measurement on that so yeah the best thing i would i would advise to people is if they get one of these yards is is pull out your drenching rice out the back give it a go see how that works yeah. for you um uh, pull it out the front see if that works for you there are no right and wrongs no. on that basis um, one thing that's absolutely crucial, particularly with, well, I think with all the yards, but particularly with this yard, is the use of the L brackets. Uh, L, bra yeah. L brackets are important. We, we purposely make our couplings um, nice and loose, and that makes them a lot easier to mm. pin on rough ground, yeah. if you've got to pin them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, but it does mean that if you've got five or six hurdles in a straight line, just on your main pen, yeah, yeah. don't need to worry about these L brackets except yeah. for your main pen, then you will get a tilt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sheep will sense it and you'll be in trouble. And that, well, <laughs> when I was on places, like I said before, they're like one of the most important things because you find, but if it's in a straight line and not on a curve, it just, you can see it. Because it's aluminium, so then it's light and yeah. it's good for one thing, but it needs support. Yes, yeah, it does. It does. And it's dead easy to use these, literally just kick them between the two hurdles lift the pin up an inch, drop the pin in the bottom there, and then the stirrup goes over the top of the pin. Yep. Job done. You do need to make sure that when you're pulling your main pen up, yep. that these stay at right angles to the pen. It's yep. no good if they're, if they're going at 20 degrees or whatever, because they won't provide yeah. any support. So they do need to be made sure that they're, they're, um, that they're at right angles to the, to the two hurdles. A lot of people use them um, some people use them with short pins, which are supplied, and some people don't. Yeah. If you want to use them with short pins, you can actually store the short pins ah. in the in the bracket so that you're not looking around for them, and then you can just pick the whole bracket up, pop it in as I've just said, and then one pin in there, one pin in there. To take the pins out, it's a piece of cake, you just detach the, 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 the L bracket and then just pull it, yeah. and the pins will pop out. So it couldn't be easier um, on that but definitely worth using on your main pen. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> else one day, everything will go over probably. Um, <laughs> my other bit of advice, which is slightly peculiar to mobile handling systems is, by and large, you wanna try and avoid picking up hurdles or panels. They're designed to be dragged. Yeah. And you'll find it takes out a lot less of you to drag something than it does to um, to, to pick it up. Um, we do make this bit of the aluminium flat, yeah. so that if you need to put them under your arm and carry them, that's the that's the bit to hold on with your hand. My tip for moving these is, yeah. if you once you've obviously taken the A-frame yeah, yeah. down, yeah. So, so you need to move some hurdles from here to the back of your drenching race, yeah. 
don't try and pull them in a straight line because they'll flop over. Yeah. What you want to do is take a pin out from what, what you're comfortable with, shove the ah. pin through, shove the pin through there, and then drag them next to you. And that way you'll have four or six, whatever you want, hurdles that are nice and upright. You get to the back of the drenching race, pop the pin in, and then pull them round. And that way everything stays upright yeah. and, and, and uh, doesn't flop over on you. I oh. never even thought about that. <laughs> it's all these little tricks that I get, which yeah. obviously you deal with them every day. You get to learn. Them. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other big tip I, I, I think is worth mentioning to people that are used to using a static system. Yeah. Are buying one of these is one of the main advantages of a mobile system in terms of flow is that the sheep are static. Yeah. Unless you're trying to ask them to go somewhere. Yeah. And and. The way you do that is that because these are nice and light, you want to be constantly dr uh, pulling up your main yeah, pen yeah. as you work through it. So if you've got 200 U's in that pen and you've gone through 50 of them, don't just leave them in yeah. like they are because they'll start moving around the pen. Keep them tight. Keep them tight. Yeah. Keep, keep the, the hurdles pulled up against your fence. And that means that the only movement they make is when you open that six foot forcing gate, they're going forward all yeah. the time, going forward. And that's that's a big big difference because these things are designed to be dragged around all the time. Um, another tip I would say on this on, on, on mobile yards in particular is um, obviously in really wet uh, ground you have got a danger when you put a lot of sheep through mm. the yard base you have got a danger that it can sink sink, yeah. sink down um, and then obviously you're going to struggle to get the wheel uh, arm back on again. My tip for that is we've built this plate here, but obviously we can't just build it up because it would end up yeah, tilting yeah, yeah, the old yeah. yard base in dry ground. Want to carry around a bit of four by two, yeah. really wet ground, just shove it under there, just to give your yard a bit of a, a lift so yeah. that you don't end up having to dig it out at the end of the day at four o'clock on a January day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it. Um, I suppose one other tip I would say that I'm really keen to impress on people as well as people ask me about foot bathing. Yeah. Um, you you, you uh, haven't haven't done that here in terms of needing a foot bath. Yeah. But, but what I would say is if you do need to foot bath, please don't put the foot bath with formalin or what have you in the main um, main part of the yard. That part of the yard is not really designed for working in. Yeah. Um, it's designed for, for sheep moving, yeah. either drafting them or getting rid of them or whatever. Much better to put two of the panels, the eight foot panels, yeah. at the front, put a guillotine, which we sell, on the end. Yeah. Then you can bring your sheep through. It doesn't hurt their feet to, to, to go through the checkered metal anyway. Yeah, yeah. And they drop down into the foot bath, much easier for you. You can put this um, drop-in gate behind them and then when you when you want them to move on just pull on the rope and and let them go out the front that way your formalin or whatever's always away from yeah. the yard yeah. Um, yeah you get a selection of spare cool. long pins three-way connectors are really useful for, for, for teeing off so if you need to make a separate pen yeah. for the odd sheet or whatever three-way connectors and two-way connectors which if, if, if you end up with two hard lugs, so you've pulled your hurdles round and you end up with two two lugs, you can just shove that in so you can connect two hurdles Rather together. Rather flip it all around. E e exactly. Yeah. So those are the real... And of course the short pins that, that are in here as well. And the short pins are really for securing anything. Yeah. You'll find that you can even use the short pins on your main drenching race if you're on the side of it's the only place you can't find a flat place to set it up but you think your drenching race is moving around a bit you can pin it down the same way as you pin them down the the l brackets um and really i think that's it will yeah no I don't know if you've got any questions uh, the only thing that um i was gonna ask obviously this is the 10 foot standard is that right that's correct i was just what would be the difference with this and the 12 foot is there an eight no, it's just... so we've got the 10 foot uh, standard, which is our most popular yard. Yeah. And, and really there's two reasons for that. The seven foot hurdles in a footage terms yeah. represent the best value for money. Yeah, well, we discussed this when I was on the phone because right. I worked a lot. I was like, well, really it's quite similar, but yeah. less hurdles. That's right. Because it's a seven foot hurdle, although the, 
that the hurdle's more expensive than, say, a five-foot hurdle. In footage terms, it's less expensive. Mm. So that's the first point. Second point is, with 20 hurdles on, that's going to pen up with ease 250 big U's against one side of a fixed fence. Yeah, yeah. So it'll pen up more in a corner yeah. and obviously less behind electric. Yeah. And that really, most people, a lot of people are working yeah. under that amount. Yeah. So it fits the bill. We also do a 10-foot super, which is four banks yeah. of five-foot hurdles. So one bank there, yeah. one bank at the back, one at the front over that side, four banks. Yeah. And that's 200 foot of shedding because it's 40 times five. And yeah, that's going to pen up near a sort of 500 yeah, yeah. Um, big use on their own against one side of a fixed fence. So that's an option. And then we do one, which is the really big one, yeah, yeah. which is called the tilt bed. Yeah. And really the tilt bed is, well, it's 46 foot hurdles, yeah. but it's it, it's really overcoming the problem of legal weight because yeah. all these uh, trailers are legal, road legal, obviously. Yeah. Um, and they have to be, because they're unbraked, they have to be under 750 kilos. Yeah, so anyone without a license, a trailer license can tow these too, can't yeah, they? Yeah, right. yeah, 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 exactly. So it's, it's um, you know, that's where the tilt bed is. Slightly rarefied beast. It is obviously for big numbers. Yeah. We sell them to people, big contractors, a lot of sheep behind yeah, electric, yeah. but it's a lot more involved. Yeah, um, I bet it takes some setting up. Uh, <laughs> oh, I suppose funny, it's funny not funny that enough, It's quite quick to yeah, set up yeah. because it slides off. Yeah. It, it's, and you haven't got any wheel arms to take okay. off. So actually, it's quick to turn off, but certainly there's more to it, yeah. a lot more expensive, yeah. mainly because of the brake trailer. Yeah. That yeah. puts a big premium on that yard. So yeah, it's all about, I, I say to people, it's really about your, your bunch size. Not how many sheep you've got, yeah. how many do you actually work with at yeah. any one time. Well, with us, I've said, well, we're still on the phone. I'd like to, we've got 150 now, build 300, but still keep them in the 150 group. So, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And that's why this suits us perfectly. Yeah. This, so. this is absolutely perfect for that. 150, you'll be able to not only set up a nice, easy big pen to get them in, yeah. but you'll also straight away be able to set up a nice drafting pen as well, because yeah. you've got those few extra hurdles yeah. to work with. So, uh, yeah, perfect, Real. perfect no. for that. Thank <laughs> you for that, Mark, and it's been really informative and really interesting. Well, great, great. And I can't wait to get you using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it doesn't want to stay that colour. It no, to, no. Well, as, as you know, with all livestock equipment, you know, you want to get the shine off it, put a few sheep through it, it'll smell better for them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, get Real. using it. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Cheers. So guys, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Mark for doing that for us today. I really appreciate it. He spoke really well about the wrappers, so massive thank you. But unfortunately, I recorded this earlier and for some reason the volume didn't work. But I'd just like to say a massive thank you for watching today, guys. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a massive like. If you want to see more stuff like this, please smash that subscribe button. And don't forget, videos are every Wednesday and Saturday at half seven. And soon to come, we will be getting the wrapper out. It's not behind me what it was but yeah we'll be getting the wrapper out and doing stuff with the sheep so keep tuned guys it'll be coming soon in some coming videos cheers